This half hour of the Glenn Beck program is brought to you with limited commercial interruption by ProFlowers.com. So previously, uh, there's pigeons, and they don't like it when people build things higher than like two stories, and so they've been sabotaging everything. Um, then humans started building stone structures, which made it a lot harder for the pigeons to set fire to the buildings. So one day a pigeon set fire to a building like a mile away, and it, I believe it did take out the church, but it also took out like half the village. The pigeons were thinking about leaving, but then the humans um, figured out that it was the pigeons that did it, and so were fighting the pigeons, and so the pigeons were like, you know, because you were upset at us and fighting us, we are going to fight you. We're not budging. We're not going to leave. So anyway, where are we? Okay. Da, 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 da. Let's see. So when we were, they descended on the construction site. They reached a stalemate. Were we there? Okay, that, whatever. We'll go with this paragraph. The pigeons pecked and pooped and spread disease and did everything they could to make the humans miserable. In turn, the humans ratcheted up their violence against the birds. Truthfully, the pigeons couldn't do much more than annoy the humans. But when the humans started to rebuild the cathedral, the very symbol of their arrogance, the pigeons waged all-out war. Thousands of them descended on the construction site, risking life and wing to chase away the workers. Day after day, pitched battles were waged between the humans and the birds. And no matter how many pigeons the humans killed, more always seemed to come. They reached a stalemate. Construction ground to a halt. It seemed there would never be another cathedral on the site of St. Paul's, and that the pigeons of London would be harassed and killed forever. A year passed. The pigeons continued to fight, and their numbers to dwindle. And though the humans were steadily rebuilding the rest of London, they seemed to have abandoned their plans for the cathedral. Yet the violence continued because hatred between humans and pigeons had become ingrained. One day, the pigeons were meeting on their island when a rowboat arrived carrying a single human. The pigeons became alarmed and were about to swarm him when they, he raised his arms and shouted, I come in peace! They soon learned that he wasn't like most other humans. Haltingly, brokenly, he could speak the pigeons' native language of chirps and coos. He knew a great deal about birds, he told them, and peculiar birds at that, because his mother had been one. Moreover, he sympathized with their cause and wanted to broker a peace. The pigeons were astounded. They took a vote and decided not to peck the man's eyes out, at least not right away. They questioned him. The man's name was Wren, and he was an architect. His fellow humans had tasked him with attempting to rebuild the cathedral on the hill yet again. You're wasting your time, said Nesmith, the fire starter and the pigeon's leader. Too many of us have died to prevent it. Of course, nothing can be built without peace, replied Wren, and no peace can be achieved without understanding. I come seeking a new understanding between my kind and yours. First, we recognize that the air is your domain and we will build nothing in it without your permission. And why would we give our permission? Because this new building would be different from all the ones that came before. It would not be meant solely for the use of humans. It would be yours, too. Nesmith laughed. And what would we want with a building? Why, Nesmith, said another pigeon, if we had a building, we could escape from the cold and the rain when the weather was bad. We could roost and lay eggs and stay warm. Not with humans around to bother us, replied Nesmith. We need a space all our own. What if I could promise you that, said Wren. 
I'll make the cathedral so tall that humans won't have any interest in using the top half at all. Ren did more than make promises. He returned day after day to discuss his plans, and even altered them to satisfy the pigeons' whims. They demanded all sorts of do nooks and crannies and belfries and arches that were all but useless to humans, but were cozier than a living room to pigeons, and Ren agreed. He even promised the pigeons their own entrance, high above the ground and inaccessible to the non-winged. In exchange, the pigeons promised not to stand in the way of construction, and once it was built, not to make too much noise during services or poop on the worshippers. And so an historic accord was forged. The pigeons and humans called off their war and returned to merely annoying one another. Ren built his cathedral, their cathedral, a proud and towering place, and the pigeons never again tried to destroy it. In fact, they felt such pride in St. Paul's that they swore to protect it, and to this day they still do. When fires break out, they swim and beat the flames with their wings. They chase away vandals and thieves. During the Great War, squadrons of pigeons redirected bombs in mid-air so that they fell clear of the building. It's safe to say that St. Paul's would not be standing today without its winged caretakers. Ren and the pigeons became lifelong friends. For the rest of his life, England's most esteemed architect never went anywhere without a pigeon close at hand to advise him. Even after he died, the birds went to visit him, now and again, in the land below. To this day, you'll find the cathedral they built still towering over London, peculiar pigeons keeping watch. The end. Ho, 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 ho. What you're about to hear is the fusion of entertainment and enlightenment.